density at this is, it used to be, I think, that if you were a clever, creative person, and you really, really liked marketing, your uh, options were uh, ad agencies and design firms. That was pretty much it. But, you know, it's not so true anymore. And if you're really, really clever and creative, and you love marketing, you also have the um, option of perhaps working for websites, or better yet, maybe even starting or conceiving of a website. And our two speakers are, you know, are both very clever, creative people who don't have to work in traditional ad agencies or design firms, but they are creative nonetheless. And uh, so, I just want to give a really brief intro. Dave is, uh, Dave played uh, basketball. And, uh, <laughs> and is, uh, and is a friend. And Dave runs a company called Color Jar, and they do a lot of consulting and branding of color. I mean, that word gets talked about a lot. He wasn't, uh, he'll explain in more detail what exactly he does, but for websites and for brands. Um, and, uh, Jeff is a um, longtime website entrepreneur who was one of the founders of Priceline, and, um, and he now does a lot of what we would call, I guess we would call, um, selling to uh, liquidators. Well, selling to like um, selling low-cost items and entrepreneuring the notion of having these things being sold um, at uh, you know at high value. Woo! Anybody playing with Woo.com? Uh, Jeff has uh, been involved in the company that helps supply them the product. I like to think of Jeff, however, and again, he'll explain to you in much greater detail what he's done in the past and how he can help you. I like to think of Jeff as the person who brought us William Shatner, Shatner the price line negotiator. <laughs> and uh, so thanks for that. <laughs> and, um, I'm sorry, I have, I've never bought one of his record albums, but I love the commercials. But, uh, yeah. And um, okay, so anyway, so thanks very much for coming. Discourse. 
So if you want to find out what people are talking about, go to Twitter, you can get a pretty good idea of it. Um, one thing that I found to be surprising is that how much people are talking about fail and failure. On Twitter, you can append what's called a hashtag to one of your tweets to categorize it. And fail is one of the top 20 topics on Twitter consistently. Now what's surprising is that it trumps some things that I used to think were pretty popular, but according to Twitter, fail is way more out there. Things like swine flu, live strong, win, uh, are just getting trumped out by failure. And so people are really highlighting, seeking out, and even celebrating failure. Even Twitter's most beloved icon has become the fail whale, which comes up when the site is down. People have gone so far as to get the fail whale tattooed on them, talking about failure. Now, it's become really, I would consider it a new catchphrase, where if you see somebody at the hot dog vendor at the baseball game and he drops his tray, there's a good chance someone's gonna yell out fail. And if he drops the tray, and trips down the stairs are going to yell, epic fail. <laughs> I sort of miss these days, actually. As annoying as that was, the Paris Hilton, that's hot, because you know, at least it was something positive. Um, I just noticed that she's actually missing an apostrophe on her shirt. But I like where her head's at, nonetheless. Um, as annoying as that's hot was, compared to epic fail, I would take that time. So we have all these people out there who are, have adopted this mental frame of going throughout their day and seeking out and waiting for someone to screw up so that they can update their Facebook status or they can text their best friend and just tell them what failure they just saw. Um, and I think it's a problem um, particularly for entrepreneurship because one of the things you do as an entrepreneur is you're constantly taking the pulse of the world around you up on trends and see where there might be opportunities. And whether you realize this consciously or subconsciously, you start to realize that a whole lot of people are spending a whole lot of time thinking about failure and pointing fingers at one another. And the reason that this is a problem Come on in. We're just talking about failure. <laughs> the uh, the reason that this is a problem is because as an entrepreneur, um, there's one day where you're gonna have an idea, and in order to take action with it, you're gonna have to get up off the couch. And it's a scary thing to do because you're putting yourself out there, um, and it's already a, a, tough, a tough hill you're gonna have to climb. You already know before you ever set out and take your first action that the odds are against you. Most new ventures do not hit the goals that they originally intend to hit. You know that it's going to be a lot of hard work. You're going to have to put everything you have into whatever it is the new idea. And you also um, realize that you're going to have to make a bunch of sacrifices. So we're already stacking it against entrepreneurs. Now we're adding in this other dimension where, well, are people going to point at me and laugh and say mean things about me if I don't fail? It sounds kind of trite, but it's actually true because people consider a lot what their peers and the world around them is going to say, and it makes people afraid to try. So everyone has to get up off their couch, usually to accomplish something, except for this guy, <laughs> who proved me wrong and managed to accomplish something actually on his couch. Uh, but for the rest of us, you gotta get up off your couch at some point, you gotta take a risk. Um, and all this talk about failure, I think, is preventing people from doing that. My get up off the couch moment um, took place in Germany. I was living in the French-Swiss border, um, and I liked my couch a lot. It was, uh, it was comfortable. I enjoyed it. I was playing professional basketball um, in Germany, and it was, a, it was a great lifestyle. I was getting paid to play a sport that I played for most of my life. Um, people were generally pretty nice to me, except for my coach, but that's another story. Um, and just overall, it was a good lifestyle. I mean, when I did something well at work, people would stand up and cheer for me. Um, it was kind of a unique time, but my friend and I had an idea, and uh, it was an idea that we just couldn't seem to share we couldn't shake. So whenever we'd kind of drop it, it would come back to us, and we had both been bitten by the startup bug previously. We eventually decided to just go for it, and going for it meant moving to India. <laughs> <laughs> so, 